Oh, Twilight Tragedy, you failed me, asked Discord in that sickening fall of compassionate tone he so loves as he sits on his throne. How disappointing of you. I... I'm sorry, Master. An older pony was there. They knew you'd send me and had a trap set. I managed to erase that one, sir, but I had to retreat for the time being. They laughed and said you must be slipping, letting your second-in-command walk into a trap so easily. I reply, looking up at him, bruises covering my face and upper body. I have a pleading, miserable, fearful look in my eyes, like a beaten dog expecting to be punished. The sword gets furious, glaring straight down at me, his normal silliness vanishing in an instant. Oh, did they? Well, I think it's time those precious little fillies get a visit from their master. I'll punish you when I return. And do get that dragon ready for my next ride. I have a feeling I'll have a few corpses to parade around my kingdom. He growled, disappearing in a flash of light. I smirk as he goes, standing up tall and wiping the blood from my mouth. Watching Lyra Jack for so long has made me a pretty crafty liar myself. You sure you want me to do this, Twilight? Asked Apple Pie, the little filly staring up at me, fear in her eyes. I nodded quickly, a determination in my eyes that I had to be very careful to hide from my master. Yes, don't worry. I'm immortal. You can't kill me that easily. Just give me everything you've got. For this to work, Discord really has to think you kicked my flanks. Don't hold back one bit. Apple Pie nodded with a sad sigh. All right, hold still, she muttered, before turning around, taking aim with her hind legs right at my face. Apple Pie is definitely an apple. Even the sweet apple acres is now who knows what. That changes from day to day. Last I checked, it was covered in snow and on fire at the same time. My name is Twilight Tragedy. At least, that's what Master Discord calls me. Oh, I remember when I called him Master and believed I meant it for real. He thinks I still do. I don't know how long we've lived in this rotten dystopia of his. It's easy to lose track of time when you're immortal. But given how long it's been, it was only a matter of time until the old man slipped up and one of us broke free without his knowing. I walked down around my room. Master's out taking a ride on Spike. Nothing for me to do but read up on the latest black magic he wants me to try out. As I lift up the book, something catches my eye. A little scroll, shoved in between the desk and my bed. For some reason, I feel like it's calling out to me. My horn lights up as I telekinetically pull the paper from its hiding place. When rolling it, I instantly notice something. It's my horn writing, but I don't remember writing it. Then I read what's written on it. Friendship is magic. Friendship is magic? But tragedy is magic. That's what Master has always told me. Why don't I remember writing this? It's my horn writing. I had to have written this. Maybe the master is playing a game with me? But then, why? Why does it seem so familiar? Why does it sound so right? I head into my room, opening an old book I found in my master's personal collection. He'd given me access to it. Having his personal assassin up to snuff on all the deadliest spells is useful. And being immortal, seeing me mess up on them was a favorite pastime of his. And now, he's going to regret it. That's not the only thing he's going to regret. I walk down the hall. Friendship is magic? Why? Why does that just click? Why do I feel like it's important? Why do I feel like, like it's right? I can't ask the master. I know that. Why do I know that? What's going on? I see a dull orange earth pony walking past me. A thought comes to my mind. Lyrajack, I call, getting her to turn to face me. Yeah, Twilight, she asks, looking at me. Tragedy is magic, right? I ask, innocently as possible. Oh, of course it is, Twilight. No doubt about it. Funny thing about Lyrajack, she lies. Even I knew it. I know Apple Pie and her friends won't be able to hide from him. I feel a pang of guilt in my heart. But I know that if this succeeds, their sacrifice won't be in vain. I can't let it be in vain. I get out a clocking calendar, as well as all the ingredients I would need. The irony of all this ending in the same way it began doesn't escape me. I'm just sending another message to myself. I look over the letter once more. Master is busy rearranging the glass morangerie that used to be Manhattan into a giant board game, which he then intends to play. What does it mean? I whisper. My head feels like it's burning, like something is trying to break out inside my brain. I was curious originally, but it asked Larjack about it, and her answer just confirms my suspicions that something was wrong. Now I can't think of anything else. If I sent myself this letter, somehow, I wonder if I write a letter of my own. Friendship is magic? What does that mean? I slide the letter back where I found the first one, putting a darker ribbon on it to identify it as different, just in case. A few weeks later, I find a new ribbon on it, and so it continued that way, until I could remember it. I could remember everything. Time magic is a tricky, risky thing, you know. If the situation wasn't so dire, I'd never do this, but it's not like there's a possible future worse than this one. Summoning as much power as I can, I concentrate on sending my thoughts back into time, another message to myself. One moment in time, it will matter the most. Maybe once the world stops being kind, maybe when the world stops being playful, Maybe that's when we stop too. 
With Applejack, the first of my friends I formally made in Ponyville, still next to me, I look at the part of the sky Rainbow Dash flew away towards. Why did she leave us? She wouldn't without a reason. I know whatever it was, it had to be important. Maybe loyalties only last until something bigger comes along. So much for the ponytail of the loyal samurai. Maybe friendship only lasts until the world applies just the right pressure. Is this the truth Applejack didn't want you to see? Friendship Report 25. Pinkie Pie learned that she should always expect the best from her friends, and never assume the worst. I give a blink of confusion. Where did that thought come from? Or was it just a memory? I remember. That was the day that Pinkie Pie almost went insane because she assumed we'd all abandoned her, and we were simply unable to tell her what we were really doing. I look back up as Rainbow Dash flies off. Am I doing the same? Am I just assuming the worst? Maybe she knows something I don't, just like we knew we were throwing Pinkie Pie a surprise party and she didn't. I look at Applejack. Just because she's been lying all this time, doesn't mean I shouldn't think this is one. She told the truth about Rainbow flying away. Before I can sort things out, the maze wall began to crash down around us, vanishing. The effect is immediate. New memories rush into my mind, ones that weren't there before. A sudden epiphany about not thinking the worst of my friends, restoring my hope just before I lost it. Calling Discord out on cheating. Him showing me my mistake. The elements weren't in the maze. I begin to lose hope again. It's not enough. I concentrate again, powering up the spell once more. I... I was wrong. Whatever happened to my friends? This... It's my fault. I... Wait, he's never played fair. Why should I expected him to? No matter what I did, he'd have done whatever he could to cheat. I... That's right. Discord is a cheater. It didn't matter which choice I made, there was no right one. But what does it matter then? No matter what I do, a cheater can still be beaten. As long as I have hope, I can't give up. I can't quit just because it seems too hard. Did Fluttershy back down when that dragon was on the rampage? Did Rainbow Dash stop when she saw how far Rarity was from her during that fall? No, so what gives you the right to quit now? If I give up now, Discord wins! Where are all these ideas coming from? Right though, if I give up now, Discord does win. If I keep trying, he might win. And all the quest is counting on me. I can't afford to give up now. More new memories, rushing to Ponyville. There they are, the elements! They don't work. No, I'm giving up again. But wait, what's this? Memories of letters rushing to me from the princesses. My own friendship letters. I see my own darkness being washed away. I see myself pinning my friends down one by one and restoring their memories, their true selves. I smell as one glorious memory enters my mind. The look of shock on my master's face as he's beaten. I use another new spell I know on the mirror before me, causing it to distort and change to show me events happening elsewhere. I see Discord. Surrounded by dozens of maimed, dead, and dying ponies, many of which aren't even recognizable anymore. New friends. I let rage rise inside of me, being the one thing I have left to do. Discord laughs that stupid laugh of his, half applies throat firmly in his lion paw. I've enjoyed this game, but I'm afraid it's time for it to end, he said, smirking and scratching his chin. Now what should I do to the little ringleader? He asked, looking thoughtful. Oh, I know. I think I'll- Discord screamed his apple pie bit down on his paw, causing him to drop a little filly. You little brats, you actually bit me! I ain't going down without a fat! exclaimed the little filly, jumping at Discord and attempting to buck him in the face. Discord just teleports behind her and whips her away with his tail. Oh, how cute. You actually think you could fight me? stated Discord with a chuckle. That hasn't worked well for anyone else. Are you certain that's a game you want to play? Miss Mimic did a pretty good job. That's why you're missing the tooth, ain't it? Discord's eyes went wide. How do you know about that? he exclaimed, taken off guard at the mention of the only point to ever successfully hurt him. Well, until today. Alpi leapt up while Discord was reacted and bucked him right in the face. Sudden by the kick, Discord was left open to another kick in the face. Funny thing about not feeling pain often? It hurts a lot more when you finally do get hurt. Alpi goes for a third kick, but Discord finally teleports out of the way. Oh right, now you're just getting annoying, he growled, snapping his fingers. Razor Sharp playing cards manifest and tried to lacerate poor Apple Pie. The little filly manages to dodge and jump into the air towards Discord. Discord snickers, then looks surprised, left open as Apple Pie kicks him right in the head. He smirk, knowing why he didn't just teleport away. The time change is starting to catch up with him. Apple Pie takes advantage and gives him a quartet of kicks right to the skull. Finally, a loud crack resounds through the air. Discord's horn went flying into the air and embedded into the ground nearby, causing a pained cry. Looking close, I notice gray stone where the crack happened. My horn, you, you actually hurt me, exclaimed Discord in complete disbelief, holding the bleeding stump where his horn used to be. Applepie chuckled. Yeah, not bad for a little filly, huh? Discord snarled in rage, her composure dissolving into almost animalistic anger. Oh yes, and it'll be the last thing you ever do! He yelled at the top of his lungs, fury filling every word that this near filly had actually managed to hurt him. 
I promise you that! You don't want to know what happened next. Just know that when the ancient unicorn mimic managed to bust out Discord's tooth, he turned her bones to glass and slammed her into the ground at Sonic Rainboom speeds over and over again, and vaporized her body. Alphys and Mites was no less brutal. My blood boils like fire, and I let my tears flow freely. Discord panted in fury, a murderous rage in his eyes as he stood over what was left of the filly who had broken his horn, probably wondering how he'd been rendered unable to teleport, only to notice something. Particles of light rising off the bodies of his victims, then slowly fading away. What? I didn't do that. He muttered, watching the bodies vanish. He then looks back at his tail, and his eyes widen with shock. No, no! He exclaimed, fear in his eyes as he sees stone slowly but surely began spreading across his body. It'll take Discord far longer to make it here than before, if the spell acts as it should. I have a lot to do before he gets here. And to make sure he does get here, I cast a temporal displacement cell on the two of us, ready to wait until he's as weak as I need him to be. I'm going to enjoy this. But first... First I find Lyrajak, looking torn, a conflicted look on her face. I see little bits of light coming off her, heading towards Ponyville. That's a good sign, exactly what I hoped would happen. I let her rest her head on my shoulder, crying softly. Ah, I didn't mean to lie. I told me our friendship was going to break. I, I just... Stand the truth. This is all my fault. Applejack, it's okay. You don't have to lie anymore. Not now, not ever again. The score tricked you, just like he tricked all of us. Now we're all getting a second chance, even if we don't remember it. Just don't make the same mistake twice. I've already forgiven you. Me and my past self, too. Remember. The darkness fades from my body, reverting her to her normal colors. She looks up and gives me a genuine smile. Thanks, Twilight. Just don't go lying to yourself now, she whispers as she fades away completely. I'll be seeing you soon, I guess. She disappears into light. I let the bitterness towards the one making me witness this grow, but her words still sick to me. Next was Fluttercool, though hers was a bit strange, I'll admit. Two streams of light, separate but unified, rose off of them. Where I could say anything, she... They... went to me instead. It's alright, Twilight. Everything will be okay. But don't say we never have to be cruel again said Fluttershy, at least I think it was. Fluttershy's body language changed completely, to a more strong-willed pony instead. I think I understand now. Sometimes, the kind of thing is to be cruel. Better to pull out a throne than let it fester. She, they, smiled and faded. I don't know what to think about that one, but I feel strangely good. I head to Rara Gray's room, expecting to find her in a similar condition. Instead, I'm greeted by Tom being hurled right through the door in the window behind me, followed by several other smaller rocks the poor mare had been hypnotized into thinking were gems. Rarity? I ask, poking my head through the window. Rarity was throwing rocks out of windows and in all directions, tears streaming down her face. Stupid rocks! I don't want to! She screamed, throwing another, forcing me to dodge. Rarity! I yell again, trying to get her attention. She twirls around, looking at my face in surprise, and wraps her hoods around me, sobbing her eyes out. All I can do is hug her back. I feel a praying fire inside me, directing towards the one putting her through all this misery. I feel a fire growing. I'll keep burning it there. I don't want any of this, Twilight! The poor mare sobbed. Even if they were gems, I wouldn't. The only thing I want, the only thing I want is Sweetie Belle. I just let her slip away all this time. I missed her whole life. Now I just want her back. She cried, even as she began to fade away a bit. Birdie, you're getting another chance now. I don't have time to explain, but you'll have a second chance. You'll have Sweetie Belle back, I promise. You're probably never going to remember this consciously, but never forget how much Sweetie Belle means to you, how important she is to you. Don't let your desires get between you and her ever again. Promise me, Rarity, that you won't. I plead, looking her right in the eyes. Promise me! Rarity's colors return as she continues fading. She gives me a smile, and we hug. I swear, she'll never go this to this again, she said tears running down her face as she too fades away in my forelegs. Next was Angry Pie, who was, well, not Angry Pie. She was presently wearing a party hat, throwing the various weapons she'd wielded against anything that had ever laughed at her out the window. Gummy, restored to his original infant self, was sitting there, staring at his owner happily. I look around, finding her normally dank and dreary room made up like a party was happening. Does, does she know what's happening? She looks almost more insane than I remember her, no matter what she's doing, even before Discord got his claws on her. Pinky? I ask, confusion in my voice. Pinky gave a gasp and was in front of me before I could even move, smiling ear to ear. Oh, how I missed that smile. Once more, I stroke the fire towards the one who stole it for so long. Hey, Twilight! Welcome to the party! exclaimed the pink pony, placing a party hat on my head. 
Party? I reply, my brain trying hard to remember what's happening. Even if I remember her parties, after Applejack and Rarity, I wasn't expecting this. Horshai was strange, but she wasn't like this. Yeah, our rebirth party! We're all gonna be brand new ponies now! If you can have a birthday party, why can't you have a rebirthday party? He exclaims, just dripping happiness. My eyes widen. You know? How do you- Oh, it's a long story, but this kinda happened to me before. It's a really, really long story, and I don't have time to explain now. That's why I didn't have time to invite every pony else, but I'll make up for that, I promise! But this time I understand. This is happening because this world is really bad, and the new one will be how it's supposed to be, and every pony will be happy again, said Pinky, in her normal, rapid voice. But let's party until I get reborn, okay? I give a small smile. I almost stopped myself from laughing before reminding myself I don't need to anymore. For the first time in Felicia knows how long, I laugh. I have fun. So does Pinkie Pie. Even as Pinkie begins to fade, we dance and have fun as much as we can until Pinkie's fading begins to speed up. It was great, Twilight. I wish it could have lasted longer. And I know I might not remember it this time, but that's alright. It was worth it just to see you smile again. I know you've got a lot of important things to do. Just don't keep us waiting too long. I think I'm going to be throwing a big party. It'll last for three weeks. Then you cut off my copy and I fall asleep and undergo character development. I... I wouldn't miss it for the world, Pinkie. I don't care if she sounds nuts. She's her again. That's all that matters. Pinkie swear! Alright. Cross my heart, hope to fly, stick a cupcake in my... I say, going through the motions and jamming my hoof right into the eye. Naturally, I give a yelp. I can never get that part right. Pinky hugs me anyway. Then I hug her back, watching her fade away in my hoofs with a big smile. One left, Trader Dash. I find her curled up in a room, confused and distraught. She looks up at me as I enter, her body faded like the rest, a tad more so since I spent so long with Pinkie Pie. I like, I'm sorry. I, I forgot out a long time ago, Rainbow. I know what happened. Trade it out when you remember how it used to be, but still call yourself a traitor, I say, once more using her real name. I pull her to her hose and hug her. I forgive you, I reply, tears going down my own cheeks as she fades in my grasp. I'm sure the me I'm going to be will forgive you too. I see her mane slowly turn back to its proper color as she fades away too. And the fire in me grows. I see dark spots begin to spread over my back like cancers. I'm going to make him pay for putting Rainbow through this. I head into Spike's chamber. The protective spell I used to keep myself tethered here just a bit longer is beginning to weaken, but it's got to last. I'm not done yet. There are still some things I've got to do. I put my hoof on the massive dragon's snout, seeing bits of him fading as well. I can't speak anymore. He lost that capability when he annoyed Discord too much. All I can do is lean in, resting my head on his as he fades, tears streaming down my face. I know what's happening. I know this is for the best. I wonder why it still hurts to see my friends fade away. I know I feel guilty knowing Apple Pie and the others probably died at Discord's claws, but I know the life we'll receive will be so much greater. I don't know. Some things we'll never know. I don't care. I like it. Peace the flames inside of me. This is what I want. I want to make him pay for all of this. As I walk down the path towards the town where my final act will take place, I look over, seeing Derby Hose cradling Dinky. No longer a pony shaped muffin, but a living, breathing foal. Mommy missed your muffin. Mommy loves you. Mommy promises she'll never let anyone take your little muffin away ever again, she repeats, her inner foal slowly continuing to fade, tears streaming down both their faces as they embrace and fade away into a new life. I let my memories of the horrors Discord put that poor mare and her beloved child through feed the flames. I find him crawling weakly towards his palace, his body turning to stone slowly but surely. Most of his tail's gone, faded away. Twilight tries to do- What's going on? asks Discord, fear and uncertainty in his voice. He can hardly move. His power is gone. Perfect. I let all my anger, all my rage, feed that fire. Not that fire is a friendship. Something else. It's Twilight Sparkle, Discord! And what's happening is things going back to how they're meant to be, I say. Feels good to call myself that. Is it wrong to enjoy seeing him like this? Maybe. But after so long, I don't care. I let the black spots spread over me as my mane begins to smoke from the fires inside me. But how can you- Because you slipped up, master! Remember all those times you let me off your leash just to pull me back? I ask, enjoying every second of this. I wrote myself a little message during one of those times. You know what I wrote? I glared right in his eyes. I feel wide in shock. Friendship is magic, I tell him, stomping right up to his face. And that got me thinking, so I sent myself back a letter, back and forth until my memories broke your spell. This entire time I've been acting like your little pawn, I ask. I tricked you. Discord looks at me in complete disbelief. But my spell, that's, that's not possible. You can't have that smart of me. You're just a pony. I'm the Lord of Chaos. I've existed longer than the entire history. How can you possibly outsmart me? Oh, it's possible, Discord, I reply. 
taking a few steps back as the shadows spread on and through me. And here's something else that's possible. Thanks to you, I found a little time spell, enough to send something back to myself a thousand years ago. A few tidbits of information that gave her the result of avoid failing where I did. And guess what, Discord? She and the others beat you. That means in the timeline overriding this one, you're a powerless statue. And that's what you're becoming now! I sit, watching Stone continue to snake up his body and then fade away. I see the fear in his face. The same fear that he loved inflicting on every pony else for so long. I relish in that fear. You know something else? I ask, my mane bursting into shadowy fire. I'm not. My body contorts and changes as I let the flames I've been feeding all this time finally consume me. Why not make sure this monster pays for every second of it at the hands of something he himself created? I feel skeletal wings erupt from my back and shadowy flames ignite in them. My tail follows the same path as my mane as my body grows into that of an alicorn. I see my fur turning a deep purple. I look over my shoulder to see bony armored plates burst out of my flesh to cover my back, razor sharp spikes covering them. I feel a helmet forming in my head, my horn growing out. My whole body is burning, but I know it'll be worth it. It'll be worth seeing every last bit of what I'm about to do. What I am is your nightmare, I call, my voice sounding ghostly, like a banshee almost. I almost scared myself with it. A nightmare born from the flames of vengeance, fed by the loss of ones I hold most dear to me. You've taken away everything that matters to me again and again and again. And all you've done is feed the fires that are about to consume you, Discord. Got a catchy name for me now? No, I've got one. Tell me what you think. Discord's eyes widen. He tries to crawl away from me. My horn glows as I slam my front hooves down on the ground, causing flaming spike chains to erupt from the ground like snakes, wrapping their way around his arms and pulling him to the ground, piercing his flesh and causing him to scream in agony. Time of purgatory, the most vengeful friend! No, you can't do this to me! Yelled Discord, quaking in terror as he looks up at me. For the first time in his life, afraid of death. Good. I make my chains pick him up and slam him hard back into the ground three times. I stomp forward, the earth blazing beneath my hooves. I make the blazing chains go through his wrists and ankles. I listen to him roar in agony with a smirk. Just like you wouldn't let Mimic be the one to ruin your flawless face, I ask, looking in his tooth. He gasps in surprise. Like the one pony to ever hurt you, I state, never letting my eyes leave his. You're ashamed of that, aren't you? I bet you're ashamed you got your horn stuck like a twig by a little filly, too. Well, guess what? I'm going to remind you what pain feels like before we fade into the new world! I yelled as the chains tear backward, pulling Discord off the ground and holding him against a stone wall, arms held out as if he was crucified. What it's like to be at someone's mercy! What it's like to feel scared like you made every pony else feel! Another chain bursts from my chest, from my heart. I don't care about the stabbing, horrible pain. It doesn't matter! Take careful aim, pointing the chain right at his black heart. Beg, I say simply, as the smell of his flesh burning from contact with my chains enters the air. Come on, beg for your miserable no-good life! Discord looks at me in absolute terror. But before he could open it, I wrap one of my chains around his mouth. On second thought, I don't think I want to hear it, master! I spat, the hellfire engulfing me, my flames intensifying with the hate I felt. The flames surrounding the chains I had aimed at his heart, like that monster has one, turned black as pitch. Nice touch, if I do say so myself. I look forward to hell, I stated, doing my best imitation of his sadistic smirk, the chain launching forward and piercing his chest, flames erupting out of it as he writhed in glorious agony. Burn, you fucking monster! <laughs> Lock the heart, the hotter my flames burn, the more agony they inflict. Every unrepentant sin is fuel for the fire that now consumes you. This is your own personal purgatory that you created with your own claws. I hope you like it, I shout. I start laughing, laughing as we begin to fade, watching the fires burn around his skin, flesh, and bone in the most agonizing manner possible. Sick fuck's finally getting what it deserves. <laughs> but maybe he hasn't.